Hello there, good evening from the UK. And now, as you may have known, um, or may not have known, WordPress 5.7 has just landed. Literally, in the last few minutes, it's just been released. And no doubt, if you have your site set to automatically update, it will be going to do that in the coming minutes, maybe maybe hours, um, certainly by the morning for me anyway. I'm sure that uh, most of the sites will have been updated. What I thought of doing this video is just actually show you some of the features of WordPress 5.7, what they are, how they work, what they do, and what you can look forward to using in this latest release. Before we do that, uh, if you want to watch more videos of WordPress development and the like, then please consider hitting that subscribe button, which you will find somewhere on the screen that you're watching. Um, and if you're liking this video, hit the like button, it would be really appreciated. Anyway, let's get cracking with WordPress 5.7. So I'm just going to talk through some of the features. I'll I'll show some features where I can, and we can look at the field notes as well on the WordPress.org uh, blog. And uh, let's just have a look at some of what's been going on and what features you can expect to see in the upcoming new version. So first on the list is... Um, if we look at this field guide here, first on the list we can see is in the admin section here is the standardization of some of the admin colors. Now, what's happened here is this is the first part of a, a big admin CSS project, but all of the colors in the admin have now been collapsed into 12 blues, 12 greens, 12 reds, and 12 yellows, as well as 13 grays, uh, black, pure black, and pure white, of course. Now that still sounds a lot, but that actually is quite a consolidation. So there's actually just seven core colors with 56 shades of each color. Um, and importantly, perhaps more importantly, is that they now all meet the WCAG 2 guidelines for color contrast recommendations. So that's a really good accessibility improvement for the WordPress admin in terms of the colors in the CSS. And they uniformly move in, in sort of um, shade, if you like, from the from one end of the color spectrum from red over to the to the other end and to sort of you know light red to dark red. So that's gonna be good. Um, I've actually just got an install. I've, I've literally just installed WordPress 5.7 on my local machine here, and I've noticed um, I, I can tell the blue, I, I might be wrong here, but the blue looks like it's changed color slightly. But what I've also noticed is that we've got this. Uh, line now next to the WordPress admin menus when you're hovering over that I, I assume if I click on posts uh, no it doesn't stay there but it, oh, it's it's white as well on that so it's kind of showing me a little bit better which menu I'm currently hovering over and and, and that's another little enhancement that I've actually just uh, just seen so if you want to look at the field notes um, they're on here about the, the admin uh, color schemes in in WordPress now, 5.7 also comes with lots of block editor improvements, which is really good to see. And um, some of the ones that I quite like are the uh, core um, filters for rendering uh, the blocks, so the, the the render block filters. So let's just click on this post here, which tells us all about this. And now there's been a render block filter for a while, and that means that if you're a developer, you can use that filter to um, maybe uh, alter the actual markup of the block in terms of how it renders on the front end. Most notably, I've used this for sort of wrapping a block in a div, um, which is quite handy. And what 5.7 gives is instead of having a generic uh, render block filter, we now have uh, specific filters for each block. So there's now a, a filter called render, you can see it here actually, render un underscore block, and then the name of the block that you want to render. So for example, render underscore block underscore core slash paragraph would give you the paragraph block. So it just makes targeting those individual blocks uh, easier without having to do all that logic with inside the function that you actually uh, attach to to those um, those filters, which might, makes it a little bit easier. And there's some good examples on the on the blog here. I think that's a good example of wrapping it as well uh, on the on the make blog here of how to to use those filters. So certainly uh, something that's uh, worth taking a look at. Let's flip back to the, the guides here. We've got some changes in the the WordPress data API. Um, 
Uh, I'm not going to go into these too much because it's not something that I'm particularly confident with using, but there are also new block variation IP, I, APIs, get my words out, and um, particularly is an is active property and a new use block display information hook, which you might find useful to read about, and you can read about that on the link here in the, the Make blog. Uh, like I said, those are not something I've ever used, so I'm not really sure what uh, what they are. I've not used the next one on here, which is the new i18 and that's the internationalization filters. But what these are, they sound actually really good, is that the, the values that get returned by the JavaScript functions for internationalization can now be filtered by developers um, in JavaScript. I'm not quite sure that happens. Again, if you ever want to read that post there, that'll be really helpful for you to, to use. And then last but not least, in the block editor, there is some inner blocks API changes. Now, I think this one render, uh, renders, this one, um, is around the fact that when you using inner blocks and you drop some blocks onto a page, let's say you've got some nested blocks, I think originally the focus was placed on the child block. And actually most people wanted the focus to remain on the parent block. Um, selecting blocks in the block editor is definitely something that needs to be improved. And if you've just dropped a block in, you probably want the parent block to be selected so that you can then make some changes to that, to that parent block itself over on the right hand side, for example. So block API changes is uh, something that's been been uh, been improved. And this was an interesting one. I think the import export tool in uh, WordPress, that's the plugin that, um, uh, in fact, no, so the export is, is not a plugin, but the import is a plugin. And um, uh, doesn't get a lot of love. And I think this is something that's, that's probably going to help some people. A very small um, improvement, but it would appear that uh, since early WordPress 2.5, 2.6, it says here, the post content and the post excerpt have both had a filter that users can use to change the exported content and excerpt, but there wasn't one for the title. Um, it appears that you could get around it by using the title RSS, but wasn't perfect, and they've introduced the title export filter so that you can filter the title just like anything else. And it gives a little example of here that you could uh, you know, add imported before that to show that this was imported. I'm not sure why you want to do that, but you get the idea. Um, it's just kind of bringing that in line with the other filters. And then also they've now added the date each post was modified and exported into, uh, sorry, modified, last, just last modified into the export files. So that's also there as well, rather than just like the date it was published. Um, so a little bit, uh, little bit better there. Um, moving on to media, I know this is um, this is a big one. Is lazy loading iframes? Now I can't remember when it was, but previous versions of WordPress have introduced the loading equals lazy attribute onto all the images. So if you add an image in the block editor, it will add that attribute to the image, and browsers are now sort of honouring that attribute and actually lazy loading those images. Lazy loading just means that it doesn't load the image; it doesn't request the image from the server until that image is actually in view in your browser window. And WordPress 5.7 takes this a little bit further by adding this to iframes. So the idea is we're not going to load all the iframe resources until the iframe is visible for the user. There's a slight caveat to this, is it only actually works where an iframe declares its um, height and width. Um, presumably that's to avoid things like content layout shifts, um, where, where things just expand and get bigger um, images obviously do we declare that which is why that probably was supported quickly so it doesn't look like this is going to be super useful for o embed content um, but the but certainly it's the it's the work in progress of making that um, improving improving that for, for for future releases no doubt so something to keep an eye on perhaps um, not quite as useful as it could be at the moment but certainly worth having in WordPress for sure now here's an interesting one. So we've got um, a user's uh, option here and there's an enhancement here to reset uh, or send password links from an admin user. So I don't know if I can show you this in here. Um, I don't have another user. So let me just create a user very quickly in here. So test user. In fact, we don't need to put the names in, do we? I think. And then we'll just use that field, but don't do that. We'll make them a author and we'll click add new. So I've now got a test user and you can see here that when I hover over this particular user, I now get the option to send them a password reset link. Now this is super useful because 
client kind of emails you and says, oh, I forgot my password, and then you have to send them an email, and you have to say, go to the login page, this is the URL, on that you'll see a lost password, press that um, button, enter your username or email address into this box, press the send lost, pa and they just get lost. So this is actually going to be really useful. You can just click that button and it will send that user the same thing. It'll send them a lost password uh, link and they can just action that link themselves. Um, I believe this is, is here. It's also available in bulk actions, so you could do it with multiple users at the same time. And I believe it's also on the actual user profile screen somewhere. There it is. Send reset link, so you can do it on there as well if you're editing a specific user's profile which um, that's a really good feature. I think they'll be very, very useful for a lot of um, a lot of agencies, probably, in particular. So that's really good. Um, there's some uh, REST API uh, enhancements. I'm not, I'm not going to talk too much about those, but again, they're on the field notes. Uh, similar with Robots API, um, uh, which is, uh, again, not something that I'm, I've ever used, I don't think, but certainly have a look at that. Um, some interesting ones in security. So the first one here is introducing script attributes related uh, related functions. So uh, an attribute on a script is something like um, async, so it like asynchronously loads, and there is some functions which you can use now to add those in. Um, and I believe uh, it gives you some examples here, for example, so you can add this async attribute uh, to this particular script, and it tells you how to do it to an inline script. Um, and it tells you how to do it to a script tag as well here. So it says uh, some functions WP get script tag, um, and then it can it can add some uh, here. It says you how to to add the the attributes to it, which is quite useful. So it looks like it it passes an array. It wants the source of the tag that you want to add the array to, and then the actual um, attribute and its value that you want to add it to. I believe that's really good um, for. Um, content security policies uh, that you might add to your site because that's something that you might need to do. Um, again, not something I'm an expert in by any means, but I um, have vague recollections of that being important when you're adding content security policies. And I believe that this might be the first step into perhaps having something like that in core in the future. Don't quote me on that, but maybe that's what is happening there, which sounds good. This is a super useful one. Um, improved HTTPS detection and migration in WordPress 5.7. So if you have ever wanted to migrate your website from you're on a HTTPS, or sorry, HTTP, and you want to move to HTTPS, it can be a bit buggy because there's a lot of hard-coded URLs in WordPress which you would need to change because the change would only happen for anything that's added after you made that change. Um, what this these changes do is they make that easier to do retrospectively. So there's some functions around detecting whether there is support for HTTPS, and by support we mean is there an SSL certificate that's installed, things like that, and it'll it'll tell you whether your environment is 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 ready to accept or use a HTTPS. Um, and if it is, there is um, there's a new button. I don't know. If there's a picture in here. Here we go. There's the picture here. There's a new button in the site health thing, so it will come up and say your website doesn't use HTTPS. Previously, that was a recommendation. Now it's kind of flagged as a, as a sort of warning, and it kind of doesn't pass the test, which I think is relatively useful. Um, and literally, there's a button here. If, if your site has got an SSL installed, which if you're running a managed you know, WordPress provider, one of, the, one of the big ones, I'm pretty sure they install an SSL for you when you add your site, so you've probably got that environment running. And here you can just click this button, update, and what that will do is it'll run through all of the URLs, um, does that on the fly, and it will actually then um, prevent things like content, uh, mixed content warnings on your pages. So they'll all get served over the correct HTTPS. Um, so that looks really useful, uh, particularly for older sites that are perhaps still running HTTP and have not sort of made that switch because it's been a little bit of a pain. Um, I think that could be super useful for those uh, for those users. A few more to go. Um, this is a also a really simple one, but a really good enhancement is the login and registration screens. So, in the past, if you we, we we've talked about this before, when you land on this page to get a new password, and um, in the past it displayed a password in the box, and I think it confused a lot of users that 
it had already saved that password as the new password and it was presenting you with the password so you could copy it down or paste it into your password manager or whatever. And obviously that wasn't the case, it hadn't actually saved it, you had to press the buttons to carry on. But the buttons weren't labelled particularly well. So now what happens is there's two buttons on this page. Uh, one here says generate password, so if you want to generate a different one to the one it's, uh, that it's been um, uh, suggested for, you can do that. And then the save password says, right, I'm happy with that password in the box. I'm going to click save to actually make that my password. Really simple, um, simple enhancement, but something that I think really clarifies that. And I know that ticket was lying around in track, which is which is down here, um, for quite a while. And finally it's been fixed, which is excellent. Um, there's some new hooks and filters on this page as well, so that devs can sort of... Um, hook in and filter the back to blog link and other sort of stuff so it's worth looking at there if you want to make some changes to to the login page um, in in wordpress and then last but not least is um this where's it gone where's it gone here we go um introducing the new parent uh, post related uh, functions or sorry post parent related functions um these are going to be super useful as well i'm, I'm actually amazed that these haven't like been there before um when, when I read this post, I thought, did we not already have these? And obviously we didn't have those. And I suspect it's one of those things that is um, people have been building their own functions for this in all their plugins and themes. So I think one of the points of this uh, work was to check whether people weren't declaring uh, these function names already in themes and, and plugins. And I think they did some work to check uh, and contact those themes and plugins that perhaps were so there wouldn't be any conflicts. Um, so we've got two new uh, functions. If you're developers, we've got a get post parent, which does what it says on the tin. It will get the post parent or the post ID of um, uh, any um, parent of the current post that you're in, and uh, it will. Uh, and there's also a has post parent. So simply, you know, does the current post that we're in, or does a specific post ID or post object have a parent? Um, and you might want to do some logic based on that. There's some examples here as well. So. You know, if has post parent, which post? If this, if the current post get the ID has the post parent, then we'll I'll put a link. And if it doesn't, then we won't. Look like back to parent page. Again, super useful. Amazing not already in court, but they are now. And you know, we can go ahead and we can start using those. And um, as we look down here, there's also a few more um, in enhancements and things. So lots of really, really good stuff in WordPress 5.7. It's kind of one of those releases that seems to have really focused on fixing some of those really core small things and. Um, you know, there doesn't seem anything massive in here, um, but obviously lots of lots of really good stuff. And uh, congratulations and thanks to all of the people that were involved in this release. It is uh, it's going to be really good. So if you haven't already, or your host hasn't already, or your auto update hasn't already, then go and update to WordPress 5.7, and you'll be able to take advantage of all those great features that we've just looked at in this video. Um, and yeah, I think that's uh, that's it from me. I just wanted to do a quick roundup of what's what's in there, what's in 5.7. Hopefully, it gives you a better of understanding. Um, and do feel free to head on over to to the link here on the MakeWordPress.org core blog, which is a field guide. It gives you all the information that you need to know. Anyway, for now, as I said, if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more about WordPress development. And until next time, I will uh, I will see you soon. Bye bye.